day 168 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Chelsea here, and today is just a super quick update with the biggest news of the day, which I'll certainly get into in just a moment. But uh, starting off, we'll have a look at some of the, the Russian military losses in the last 24-hour reporting period. Now, I won't get into the wounded and killed too much there today, but we'll have a look at some of the, the hardware units. So armored combat vehicles, an additional 10. Tanks, so Z-tanks, an additional 15, that's huge. A whole lot of artillery and nine additional Russian aircrafts lost. And that's part of the big news, which I'll certainly get into in just a moment. So starting off, having a look at the, the map here, the news of the day is actually there was an explosion at the Saki Air Base in the Crimean Peninsula here today. So we have to zoom all the way in here. This is actually 200 kilometers from the front line there as well. And uh, this is actually obviously deeply within held uh, Russian held territory there, to say the least. Now there's plenty of footage of this, uh, now, because this is apparently where wealthy Russians, potentially oligarchs, go for holiday all the time. Along the beautiful beaches of the, the Black Sea here. Not so beautiful today, obviously. Now, Ukraine has not yet taken claim or recognition for this explosion, nor has Russia admitted to any attacks. Uh, instead, Russia has released a statement of the saying, uh, be careful where you smoke, which is extremely familiar sounding to the Moskva battleship event that happened in April. If you remember that one from over here, you remember that uh, Russia had no intentions of admitting that Ukraine sunk their $170 million uh, US dollar battleship and the pride of the Black Sea fleet. And uh, now there is more fit, uh, footage in and around the area of the city here that hosts the airbase, so the, uh, the Saki airbase in the town of uh, Nova Fedorovka right here, as we can see. Uh, just incredible amounts of of air base damage there. And in the spirit of a before and after photo of sorts, uh, before the, the Russian air, by, uh, air base strike, this is a previous photo of what the air base pretty much looked like. A whole fighter squadron of Russian Su-30 multi-role fighters of the Black Sea aviation fleet. There is also a short video of a destroyed plane on the airfield here. And to top it off, Russia, uh, yesterday, uh, there was a, a Russian Tu-134 transport plane that flew into the airbase, the Saki airbase right here as well. And then this happened. In this short video, this plane is so badly destroyed, it makes it hard to discern if it was the TU-134 that had just arrived. It's, I've had a look at these uh, images for quite some time, and it does look similar, I've got to say. Now, how did this happen? Does Ukraine have this 200 kilometer or about 140 mile strike range capability? Well, they do have their own indigenously built Neptune cruise missiles. The same missiles that took down the Moskva in April there that time and are said to have a range of up to 300 kilometers or 200 miles. So it does seem like they do have this. So it's good. It's always good to see a defending nation with this type of strike distance capability. That is for certain. Now we'll move up a little bit to, to the map. Uh, obviously there's a, a lot of uh, violent ongoing clashes uh, in the in the Donbass, particularly in the uh, strategically central town of Bakhmut, uh, over there, and in Nikopol, a little bit further down here, there was uh, some additional Russian army shelling reported overnight there as well. Also in the the Kherson uh, region, so a little bit sort of inland here, a Russian radar was destroyed. Ukraine now has a, a special radar-seeking missile that they actually got from the States. And I kid you not, it's called a radiation missile. It basically just seeks radars. So that's also amazing to have that sort of capability there as well. And uh, having a quick look at the news here. So in his nightly address, 
President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the Russian war uh, against Ukraine began with the occupation of Crimea and must end with its liberation. So all I can say is them's fighting words. They really are. And uh, let's see, last but not least, uh, there have been reports of massive traffic jams said to be long before the Crimean Bridge here. Maybe all of those uh, rich oligarchs are fleeing back to safer land. That's all I can think to say there. But thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, show all those trolls in the comments, which you'll absolutely see. Um, show them who's who, who's boss. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Thanks again.